Hello, everybody. It's time. Welcome to the Minutes with Milo show. Let me straighten up my camera. Oh, I hope I don't break it. Don't break it. Ah, don't break it. How is everybody? Welcome to Thursday. Yeah. Thursday's my Friday. Sorry to rub it in your face, but here's Roberto. Hello, Roberto. Eh, about 24 hours, so give or take a little bit. Tonight's show, Minutes of Milo, is going to be another one of these. I found a little interesting book. And we're going to learn some stuff. So, I'm always interested in finding other uses for everyday items. And I reviewed, looked over, read some of the uh, preventive natural medicine cabinet stuff. And then some of that was pretty interesting. So, I came across what I used in the thumbnail picture another little book about baking soda the quick fix queen okay so this says that it's got 161 super solutions to clean up green up and simplify your life and this is by jerry baker home hints booklet all right you see that at the top jerry baker wow robert's enthused Woohoo! go Robert so let me just a little bit about I found this where at work where I find a lot of my stuff so uh, supposedly all right supposedly Jerry Baker's America's number one home health and garden expert has written over 50 books including bestsellers terrific garden tonics kitchen counter cures and supermarket super remedies all of jerry's books and jam packed full of old-time advice down-home wisdom and the best remedies on earth more great home benefit and gardening information visit jerry online it says jerrybaker.com maybe we'll have to look at that because i've got uh I can't type without looking, and I still suck at it. Is that still up and running? Is jerrybaker.com still a live site? Hmm. Well, yeah. Uh oh. No thanks. I don't want your emails. It's still out there. We'll get it here in a second. All right. So, we'll look over these things. And I, when I was talking with Craig, hey, Khalil, talking with Craig about it, and we didn't really know the difference between baking soda and baking powder. So, we looked it up. And I'm going to look it up again tonight. And we'll find out what the difference is. 
I'm going to reply to this real quick. Trying to invite somebody to the show. Let's see if they show up. Probably not. But anyway, sorry about that. Robert says vinegar plus baking soda equals strong cleaner. And a lot, some other things too. They come up, uh, he's got a couple of other ways to use baking soda as a cleaner. One of the things I'm interested in, and I may do, and I say this all the time, it's, it's, just kind of to make myself feel better, but I'm, th this guy has a silver cleaning solution, and I found a silver. It's a it's like a giant mug or a like a pitcher. Like maybe if it were usable, you would put milk in it, and you know poured out it may hold 16 or 20 ounces maybe you know, something like that but it was a, an, a it was an award so it's engraved with this inscription and stuff but it's silver plated but it still needs to be cleaned i think it would be cool if i could clean it so i bought some commercial stuff that oh my gosh it smells like i don't know what but you know it gives you all these warnings and all this kind of stuff and you're supposed to soak it so he's got this solution that I think I might try. And part of the problem with this guy's and the commercial one is, you know, they want you to submerge it. But this is probably going to be a lot cheaper ingredient wise than what the commercial one was. So I tried wiping it down with the other one, like it said to, and it worked okay, you know, but if I can get it to work with this, maybe I'd videotape trying it. See how this worked out because like i said it's it's just some baking soda and some other ingredients and you soak it but robert says powder is for cooking soda is for cleaning and that as a rule of thumb may be true i'm talking with my hands so but when we went to eat lunch today that nice lady at the counter said that she used baking soda in peanut brittle. And I thought that was kind of strange because I'm like Robert. Baking powder is for baking. Baking soda would be for cleaning and deodorizing your refrigerator and blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. But me and Craig looked it up. Sure enough. There's a recipe out there for peanut brittle that you use baking soda in. So let's look at the difference just real quick. And now might be a good time. I'm all, I'm, I usually put this off the end. But I'm going to try to remember to kind of start it at the beginning and the end. If you're watching this video live, thank you. Like, subscribe, leave me a comment. If you watching it after it's live and you've made it this far then you deserve it to yourself to like subscribe to the channel turn the notifications on leave me a comment check back watch some of the other stupid videos i've done and laugh and make fun of them that's fine just do that Quail says ain't soda mildly caustic yeah it neutralizes acids I mean, I like chemistry. I like nature. I like biology. Caustic and pH balances and all that stuff, I'm not real familiar with. That's why I'm not going to try to do any of this from memory. We'll look at it. So, let's see where we're at. All right. We're going to get this window capture going. Hold on. Let me drop this down when the capture's up. Oh, no, no, not that. Where'd it go? 
we're going to do there we go let's swap that one okay we're going to do uh i've got to rearrange this stuff so i can I don't know. let's where am i where am i move me up shrink me down put me up higher like they do I need to my head should get chopped off here is that too much huh that's a little too much bring it down bring her down now now it's chopped off my forehead again daggone it dude there we go let's just leave it that let's jump over here the difference between baking soda baking powder and bicarbonate of soda don't put it on your car battery unless your car battery spits acid out everywhere then that's what it will do yeah but it will if you get it inside your battery you're in trouble all right answering one of the biggest life questions exactly what is the difference between bicarbonate soda and baking powder bicarbonate soda otherwise known as bicarb soda is a pure leveling agent it is alkaline and commonly used in recipes that mix mix moisture plus an acidic ingredient such as lemon juice chocolate buttermilk or honey together to make a batter rise bicarbonate soda leaves a tangy flavor if overused so should be sifted very well it can also be used to polish silver we know that baking soda is bicarb soda is the same thing baking powder now this is what i found kind of interesting baking powder is bicarb soda or baking soda pre-mixed with dry acidic ingredients such as cream of tartar that causes baking to rise when mixed with wet ingredients it's usually two parts cream of tartar i don't know what cream of tartar is to one part bicarb all you need to add is moisture which gives off carbon dioxide in order to aerate and lighten a mixture during baking all right so this is what i take away from this is if you've got baking soda and i'll read it here in a minute and you can do this if you've got baking soda and you want to use it in cooking and you have other liquid acidic ingredients like lemon juice then you can use the baking soda because it acts directly with the lemon juice if you don't have some kind of acidic ingredient liquid ingredients got to be liquid if you don't have some kind of liquid and in, acidic ingredient in your baking then you use baking powder because it is the bicarbonate dry and acidic powder which they use cream of tartar and it's dry so they mix the two together when they're dry and they don't react but the minute you add water to it then it liquefies and it it takes the reaction of baking powder or baking soda and an acidic ingredient so if that didn't make sense hold on and i'll read this baking soda has three to four times more power than baking powder if you are needing baking powder and only have baking soda on hand you will need to increase the amount of acidic ingredients in your recipe to offset the baking soda's power for example if your recipe calls for a teaspoon of baking powder substitute it with one half of a teaspoon of baking soda and then include an additional teaspoon of lemon juice or vinegar to offset the acidic component or you can make your own baking powder by mixing one part of baking soda with two parts of cream tartar and then add the mixture as you would baking powder so baking powder and baking soda are very similar except baking powder is preset to use in baking and you don't have to worry about using some kind of other acidic ingredient to make it work 
You just add the liquid that you'd normally use in the recipe, and boom. Both ingredients are in one box, done. So, baking soda and baking powder are really close related. Close related. With that being said, could you use baking powder to do some of the cleaning? And I would have to say, I would be careful. Because you're getting in baking powder, you're getting a dry form of an acid. And so when you mix that with water, it's going to create maybe some unwanted effects. So if I'm going to do cleaning and I'm going to use just straight up baking soda, because that's what everything goes by is the baking soda. All right. Let's see. Is there anything in there? That pretty much covered the differences. So what I'm going to do is we're going to, until I get in there and we'll look at Jerry's uh, website, we're going to look at the book. All right, so one of the things that saw in here is like what you would normally think. Everybody, I won't say everybody. Lots of people's grandmother and mothers had open box of baking soda in the refrigerator to absorb odors. So let's see what it says. Baking soda and the fridge go together like peanut butter and jelly. So keep them together and keep your fridge fresh in the process. Fill a shallow plastic bowl with some baking soda, put it in the fridge, and let it work its magic. Replace it with a fresh new layer about every two months, and you can stick an open box of baking soda in the fridge instead, but the results won't be as good because less soda is exposed to the refrigerator air, which, you know, makes sense. But, you know, he doesn't say to pour out the old, he just says to sprinkle on some new. So, I mean, that is what. I've always thought, as you put it in your refrigerator, you know, to keep down fishy smells, onion smells, or, you know, stale smells, that kind of stuff. It says, reclaim the land of forgotten food. So if you have a Tupperware, if you don't know what Tupperware is, look it up, but it's basically a plastic bowl and it to be honest with you it probably is the reason half the people in the united states or all the people in the united states have you know this pba plastics floating around in your body because buddy you had leftovers you slapped it in a tupperware bowl you sealed it up you put it in the refrigerator and if it wasn't a lot you got it out you slapped it in the microwave and you heated it in the plastic bowl that's just the way it was you went out while it was heating in the microwave. You poured your big old glass of nice tap water out of the spigot with a garden hose hooked to it. You brought it back in. You drank the water from the garden hose and eat PBA filled food from the Tupperware bowl. Just the way we did it. And we're suffering the consequences now. But this says, if you have anything leftovers in the back of your fridge, the plastic food container is filled with blue-green fur-covered who knows what. But don't despair. That neglected container can be ready for the next round of leftovers in no time. Mix one half cup of baking soda with one quart of water and swish the dirty container around in the solution. So here he's, I guess, putting it in a bucket. Something, he's swishing that around. He's not, you know, maybe he's putting it in the sink. Soak it overnight, and in the morning, things will look and smell a whole lot better. Wash the container as you normally would, put it back to work. So one of the things that he talked about in here is using that reaction between baking soda and an acid to your advantage. 
Right. To unclog a drain, a kitchen drain, maybe even a bathroom drain, just pour some baking soda down the drain and chase it with a little vinegar. Let it sit for about two hours and flush the drain with hot water. Would it work? I mean, it's worth a shot. It's it. I mean, I don't know if it's any better than, you know, liquid plumber or one of those things. But almost everybody has some baking soda and vinegar in the house already. You may not have liquid plumber around or a plunger or one of those little hair snaky things, but I think everybody should have one of those hair snaky things. But maybe they don't. Dish pan hands. If you suffer from wrinkly post-pot scrubbing hands, add a dab of baking soda to the soapy water when you wash dishes. Even after tackling a stack of dinner dishes, your hands will feel soft. So, this reminds me of when my son had chicken pox. And I'm pretty sure that we used baking soda for chicken pox. And it neutralized the itching, itching. For blisters that have erupted and are oozing fluid, a soak in lukewarm bath, water mixed with baking soda can help dry out blisters and also relieve itching. Aim to do this two or three times a day. So that is the chicken pox deal. Can you treat chicken pox with baking soda? The constant itching and irritation caused by chicken pox can feel like torture for many people, especially children. A baking soda bath may provide relief. They need soaking in a lukewarm bath with a quarter cup of baking soda in it may provide relief from itching, according to the Seattle Children's Hospital. Now see, why couldn't you do that with just to get your, like it said in here? It'll soften up your hands. You put some in your bath water, sip your little wine, soak in the tub, you get out, and you're all nice and non wrinkly and soft and squishy. Yep. Uh so here it just calls this well no, let's not read that one. That talks about marble. Tiles. Yeah, da, 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 Grant. Okay, here's an interesting one. Prevent your toilet from clogging, backups, corrosion, and septic smells while helping to maintain proper pH and alkalinity. Simply flush one cup of baking soda down your toilet once a week. Bowl stain removal. Put that bright blue store bought chemical concoction away. And clean your stained toilet bowl with baking soda. Pour one half cup of it into the bowl along with one half cup of white vinegar and scrub with a toilet brush. So then would that help the septic tank? See that first one he's just talking about putting a half a cup. No. Simply flush one cup of baking soda down your toilet once a week. To do to help your septic tank and if you live in city water or city you don't have to worry about that of course i mean if it helps keep your lines clean maybe it would but to keep the stains down he talks about using a half a cup into the bowl with a half a cup half a cup of white vinegar then you scrub it with a toilet brush then you would flush it Clear the air. Alright, so it's an air freshener. Put a little baking soda into an open container from instantly aromatherapy. That's the same thing he said about it in the refrigerator.
So I don't see how this might work. Okay. Hairy detangling solution. Long hair is lovely until you find yourself pulling it out of the bathtub drain in big nasty clumps. Here's a super solution to the hairy problem that'll work like a charm. A half a cup of baking soda, a half a cup of salt, a quarter cup of white vinegar, and one quart of bo boiling water. Mix the ingredients in a small bucket. Pour the mixture down the drain and let it sit for about 15 minutes or so. Then flush the drain with the boiling water. Now, is it supposed to dissolve the hair? It, I mean, I didn't know. I doubt if it would dissolve hair. Hair's like daggone almost indestructible, right? So I doubt if it would do that. Maybe, because you know, everything gets trapped in hair is all soap scummy stuff. So maybe it, you know, breaks down the soap scum and lets the hair flow out into the septic tank or the poopy station water or whatever. I just don't think it would break down the hair. Uh, what else we got in here? Garbage smell. Uh, sprinkle the bottom of your trash can or your trash bag with baking soda before replacing your plastic liner. You can use the liner of baking soda to scour the can next time you wash it. Let's see, here's one. Super softening sachet. I don't know if that's how you say it. Get ready for laundry that smells fresher than it would with any flimsy fabric softener sheet. Step one. Stir one half cup of baking soda in two tablespoons of cornstarch together in a bowl. Find an orphan's sock with tightly knit fibers. Fill the toe of the sock with the powder mixture and drip in two drops of your favorite scented oil. Tie the sock shut as tightly as you can and toss it into your dryer along with a load of freshly washed laundry. Your items will come out of the dryer feeling soft and smelling fresh and clean. You can then reuse the sachet. Yes, that's how you say it. As many times as you'd like until the fragrance fades. Then simply untie the sock, empty it, and refill it with a fresh batch. Now what do they do? Robert. I don't know if they said it's based on mineral salt. I'm glad you, Robert's going behind the scenes here uh, giving me ideas. I meant to look up and show you, we'll look it up, how baking soda is made because he's talking about that in that text. Which is funny. I don't guess it's really funny. It's interesting. Look at it here in a second. So let's see. Da -da -da -da. Laundry clothes, laundry detergent making you itchy. If someone in your family is allergic to laundry detergent, try using plain old baking soda instead. It's a powerful cleaning agent on its own, and it's much more soothing to sensitive skin. Uh, where was it about getting up a wine? There's a blood stain. So, get into the homicide situation and you find yourself in need of getting up some blood stains here we go as soon as you notice blood on your clothes dampen the stain with water rub baking soda into the dampened fabric scrub and rinse if necessary toss it in the wash with a little baking soda added to your normal laundry detergent let the washer water temperature to cold and let her go just remember if you take your Sweet time, the blood stain will stick around. Hmm. Stick around permanently. 
take your sweet time, the blood stain. Oh, that means get it done quickly. All right. Don't be waiting till you get home to do it. There was one that I saw how to do your wine. Somebody spilled wine. It's the same kind of deal. Let's see. Where is it? Here we go. If you spill wine, just sprinkle the stained area immediately with a layer of baking soda. Once the wine has been absorbed, vacuum up the leftover residue. Then refill your glass and make a toast to cleaning carpet to the to cleaning the carpets. The same trick will lift a fresh grease stain from your carpet, like a splotch that results from a drop piece of pizza landed face down. In this case, however, let the baking soda sit overnight. So when your carpet starts looking a little dingy. Don't bother renting a steam cleaner. Dry cleaning won't do as good as though of a job as deep cleaning action of a steamer, but it'll take care of surface dirt so so well that you'll appreciate the saving. Mix two cups of baking soda with a half a cup of cornstarch, four to five crumbled bay leaves, and one tablespoon of ground cloves together. Store the mixture in a shaker jar. To use, dust the carpet thoroughly with the powder. Wait at least one hour, then vacuum up the whole shebang. So I guess the the cloves and the uh, bay leaves adds, you know, scent to it. So how to get up, neutralize or remove yellow or brownish urine stains on carpet, mattresses, or upholstery. Give this potion a try. Blot up the urine, then wet the stained area thoroughly with a mixture of a half, one cup each of vinegar and water. Blot the spot again with paper towels until it's damp, not wet. Then sprinkle one cup of baking soda liberally over the stained area. Combine one half cup of peroxide and one teaspoon of dishwashing liquid and pour the mixture over the baking soda. Work it in with a scrub brush until the baking soda is dissolved and the mixture penetrates the fabric or carpet fibers. Allow it to dry and then vacuum up the residue. Cat urine spots can be really stubborn, so if the stain persists after the area dries, repeat the treatment. So that's talking about pet urine, mostly. Might be your urine, I don't know. Let's see. See, a lot of these are cleaning. I don't know why this would work. If you get fleas in your carpet, Sprinkle with a, sprinkle the carpet with a mixture of baking soda and table salt. Let it sit overnight, then vacuum well. Repeat the pro procedure two more times on dry weather days, and before you know it, you'll be flea free. If you live in a damp climate, sprinkle the mixture in the morning and vacuum a few hours later. Huh. I wonder why it gets, I mean, does it kill them? I mean, I don't understand. It doesn't say how it works. It says it works. Hmm. It says baking soda to sprinkle lightly, sprinkle lightly around your vegetables and flowers can keep rabbits out. I'd heard we used to. My wife used to use uh, those dried rep, red pepper crumble things uh, for the deer, and it, you know they come sniffing around trying to eat your flowers and stuff, and it makes them sneeze. I guess you could use black pepper too.
but the crushed red pepper seem to do a pretty good job. You know, make they make over the counter uh, deer repellent stuff like that. True, uh, too. Talking about keeping your kiddie pool clean, barbecue grill, road tar. Now I saw this one, and I don't know if I'd use it on my best car. But I might use it on some of the junk that I drive. Uh, removing road tar. Where is it? Make a paste of three parts baking soda to one part water. Wipe it onto the spots with a damp cloth. Let it dry for five minutes or so, then rinse with clean water. It's supposed to take off road tar. Doesn't sound like three parts baking soda to one part water and wipe it onto the spot with a damp cloth. Let it dry for five minutes or so and then rinse with clear water. Degrease your driveway or any other concrete surfaces for that matter. Just pour some baking soda onto the oil stain and have at it. What does that mean? Just have at it. I mean, you scrub it? I guess you do. Melt ice safely. Salt in most de-icing de products can damage both plants and outdoor surfaces like concrete and wood. So the next time Jack Frost nips at your uh, sidewalks or stairways, sprinkle it with a generous amount of baking soda. Soda it melts the ice without harming anything else. That may or may not be true. I'll tell you here a little story. Let me test. Let me read this one more thing and I'll tell you a story about me and some baking soda. All right. Put your soil to the test. Now, this is kind of interesting. Although most plants thrive in a near neutral pH soil, some prefer soil that is either extremely sweet or extremely sour. Does your soil fall into one of these categories? Find out with this simple, simple test. To check for acidity, put a tablespoon of wet soil on a plate. Add a pinch of baking soda. If the soil fizzes, then the pH is below 5.0, which means it's sour or acidic. To check for alkalinity, use a tablespoon of dry salt, or I'm sorry, use a tablespoon of dry soil. Add a few drops of vinegar. In this case, fizzing indicates a pH that's above 7.5, which means it's sweet. So that doesn't include, that second step doesn't include any kind of baking soda. So the baking soda reacts with the acid, and apparently, flip that around, the soil reacts. If it's an alkaline soil, it reacts with the acid in the vinegar, which makes sense. So alkaline is non-acidic. That's what I take away from that. Okay, so talks about that. So I like to mess with cars. And if you do rust removal, like on car parts or panels or anything like that, sometimes the easiest thing to do would be sandblasting. And so at one point, you know, I was buying these small handheld sandblasters. You put your, I use play sand and sift it through double screen and, you know, try to get the small particles, the smallest particles as I can, keep it from clogging. So I wanted to try baking soda because it said baking soda is not as aggressive as sand so baking soda you know after when it's blown through the gun has a certain amount of abrasive but then it it, it explodes or breaks up and so it's not as hard and, and as aggressive as sand and, you know, I thought, well, that'd be cool. 
So I took it out. I bought a separate gun for the soda and mixed it all up. It seemed to come out real good. I tested it on a few parts. It it did okay, but it wasn't as aggressive as what I wanted. I mean, I was trying to, I didn't know. Sand was too much. This was too little. Uh, so, I mean, you know, I did, I, I did quite a bit of testing and it, it more, instead of taking paint off and, and, you know, that kind of stuff to get down, back down to the metal, it, it cleaned more than removing paint. Right. So I put it all away and said, well, you know, okay. So it wasn't the best idea. I come back like the next day or the day after that, a huge, huge spot in my yard. Now it was out back. The grass, it had killed the grass. That stuff was dead. It, it was gone. It was burnt. It was wasted. It died. And it took it forever to come back. I don't know, you know, it's not supposed, it wasn't supposed to harm anything. And I don't know why, but it did. It killed the grass dead. So I went back to using play sand because play sand doesn't kill the grass, you know, and you just, if it builds up in a pile, you just kind of shuffle it around with a rake. And the next thing you know, it just, it's down in the soil and it's gone. But baking soda killed the crap out of the grass. So be careful, be careful with baking soda. Clean your teeth. All right. Perfect peppermint toothpaste. This mouth pleaser will leave your teeth sparkling clean and your breath kissing sweet. Combine one teaspoon of baking soda, a quarter teaspoon of peppermint extract, and a dash of salt until you've got a toothpaste-like consistency. Then brush your teeth and gums as usual and enjoy. To combat the bacteria that causes gum disease, brush two, or whenever possible, three times a day. With a paste made from three parts baking soda, one part hydrogen peroxide, to perk up the flavor, add tasty extracts such as lemon, almond, or cherry. So, word of caution, don't swallow that mixture. Make sure you spit it out because it's got the hydrogen peroxide in it. Probably some of the worst tasting toothpaste I've ever used was a homemade concoction that my mother made because she used to brush her teeth as she was a kid with baking soda and salt. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It was terrible. Baking soda and salt. What you did is you mixed the baking soda and the salt. This is how, this is the way I remembered it. You mixed the baking soda and the table salt in a little container and it was dry so what you would do is you get your toothbrush and run the toothbrush under the water and then take the bristles and scrub it around in the bowl then of course what happened when you pick the toothbrush up there was a certain amount stuck to it so then you just <sighs> not recommended not recommended it was terrible when you spent too much time under the hot summer sun, reach for reach for the bright orange box. What you do after depends on whether you are what body parts are burnt. What you do after that depends on where you are, okay, and what parts of your body are burnt. Option one, add a half a cup of baking soda to a tub of lukewarm water. If you've ever had a hot uh, sunburn. <sighs> Lukewarm water is way too hot already. I tell you that right now. I mean, the cold shower is all you want, or cold soak in the tubs all you want if you've got a good sunburn. But he says put in lukewarm water, then soak in it for 10 to uh, 15 to 20 minutes. When you get out, don't towel off, let your body air dry. And leave the soda residue on your skin so it continues to pro provide relief. If you're not near a bathtub or the burn victim is your face, saturate a washcloth with a solution of 
four tablespoons of baking soda and one quart of lukewarm water. Gently apply the compress to your affected skin and hold it there until you start feeling relief. So, that's interesting. A sports drink. Now, one of the things that this leads me to another story is uh, bicarbonate. Is supposed to baking soda is a bicarbonate. It's supposed to be good for antacids. So I looked it up, and I want to read you the the uh, what the the doctors say about this. All right. So cool your sunburn. Sports drink. Anyone who wants, who works or plays in the hot sun needs to help fluids, keep fluids, glucose, and electrolytes flowing through his or her system. You can accomplish this by downing one of many commercial products, or you can make your own elixir. Note, do not give this to children under the age of 12. Do not give it to children under the age of 12. This is for adult people, teenagers and adult peoples only. One table, a half a tablespoon of sugar, a half a teaspoon of baking soda, a half a teaspoon of table salt, quarter teaspoon of potassium based salt substitute, one quart of water, unsweetened Kool-Aid powder or other flavoring to taste. Mix all the ingredients thoroughly and drink up. So, a potassium-based salt substitute might be light morton or light salt. So, not under the age of 12. As an antacid, baking soda is mixed one quarter teaspoon of baking soda to a glass of water to zap acid in your stomach. But acid doesn't cause all doesn't cause all kinds of indigestion. If your symptoms don't improve after two weeks, call your doctor. Don't take baking soda within two hours of other, within other medications. So there you have it. As an antacid, if, or just buy the stupid stuff, already, you know, follow the directions on the bottle. But it's a quarter teaspoon of baking soda to a glass of water. It doesn't say how many ounces. Typically, I think a glass of water is six to eight ounces. So there is that. <laughs> Ditch the itch of hemorrhoids. Got to find out. For many hemorrhoid sufferers, the pain of these swollen rectal veins can't hold a candle to the constant itch that can't be scratched. But it can be relieved in other ways, and this is one of the best. Mix one cup of baking soda with five to ten drops of chamomile, chamomile oil available in herb shops and natural food stores. Add the mixture to a tub of warm water, get in, soak for about 15 minutes or so, to feel much better, guaranteed. Oh, ease ulcer pain. So, the same properties that relieve indigestion, namely the ability to reduce your stomach's acidity, makes baking soda a natural for treating ulcers. In this case, the dose is one to two teaspoons in a glass of water when you feel discomfort. Say so long to splinters. Got a silver a sliver in your finger. Whatever you do, don't start digging into your skin. Instead, mix one tablespoon of baking soda in a small glass of warm water and soak your digit for about ten minutes. Repeat twice a day until the splinter pokes far enough out of your skin 
that you can grasp it with tweezers and gently ease it out. Yeah, right. I don't understand. I, what what does the baking soda? I don't know what the baking soda may play a part in that getting that out. Man, I just dig in there and get it out. Hmm. Oh, alleviate anxiety. Depending on an upcoming visit to the dentist, or maybe your annual performance review at work. Well, getting all hot and bothered won't help to avoid the experience. This simple trick will help you face it in a calmer mood. The morning of the big day, get up a bit earlier than you usually do. Mix one half cup of baking soda and one half cup of powdered ginger in a tub of warm water and soak in it for 15 minutes or so. Your anxiety level will plummet. Hmm. Well, let's see. Has anybody ever heard of canker sores? I, to me, a canker sore is a fever blister on the inside of your mouth. Or maybe where you've bitten it and it's become infected. Like if you bite the inside of your jaw and then it becomes infected. It says, rinse your mouth with a solution of one half teaspoon of baking soda and a half a glass of warm water. Repeat as necessary until the sore is gone. Soak your sore tootsies in a bath of hot water and about a half a cup of baking soda mixed in to help soothe your feet. Trouble quit smoking? With each meal, drink a glass of water with two tablespoons of baking soda mixed in. Do not use this method if you have an ulcer or on a low-sodium diet. Well, now listen, people. Earlier, you said... Ease ulcer pain, right? Am I not right? Ease ulcer pain. The same properties that alleviate indigestion, namely the ability to reduce your stomach's acidity, make baking soda a natural for treating ulcers. In this case, the dose is one to two teaspoons in a glass of warm water whenever you feel discomfort. So here's the contradiction. Do not use this method if you have an ulcer or on a low sodium diet. And the method is with each meal, drink a glass of water with two tablespoons of baking soda mixed in. All right, so maybe this is the deal. It said with each meal. So that's three times a day. That's two teaspoons at each meal, six teaspoons daily. It, seems, it does seem like a lot. Where the ulcer pain is one to two teaspoons in a glass of water whenever needed. Maybe that's the deal. That's probably the deal. Yeah, it neutralizes the acid. So, a couple of things and then we're out. This is going to be my experiment with the uh, silver. Okay. So I'm going to try this. Keeping silver at its brightest is harder than you'd think. This is the easiest method I know of for bringing tarnished silver back to life. Step one, gather two pans that can hold enough water to cover your silver pieces, a roll of aluminum foil, and one cup of baking soda. Line the bottom of one pan with foil and set it and set your tarnished treasures. Wait a minute. Let's start up. Step two. Line the bottom of one pan with foil and set in your tarnished treasure. Fill the second pan with water. Set it on the stove and heat it to a boil. Step three. Place the pan of boiling water in the sink and carefully add the baking soda. The solution will foam up and may spill over. Step four. Pour the soda solution into the first pan completely covering the silver. Within seconds, you'll see the tarnish start to disappear. 
a lightly tarnished piece should be cleaned in a whistle in four or five minutes. One with a heavy coat of tarnish, maybe a few more treatments. So the first pan with aluminum foil, uh, maybe that adds the reaction to it, is empty. It's dry. You put your item in that. Then you do, 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 do. how much? Fill the second pan with water and set it on the stove and heat it to boil. So you knew, use enough hot water that will cover the item in the other tray. And then mix in your baking soda. How much baking soda? One cup of baking soda. So I might try that. The trouble with my thing is it's, like I said, it's like a tall mug. Okay. And it's going to be hard, I think. Because it's, you know, I don't know, three or four inches in, maybe three inches in diameter or something. Maybe four inches in diameter. So it's going to take a lot of stuff to cover it up. How is baking soda made? This is going to be the last thing. 55 minutes. And we're getting out of here. Baking soda is made from soda ash, also known as sodium carbonate. The soda ash is obtained in one of two ways. It can be manufactured by passing carbon dioxide and ammonia through a concentrated solution of sodium chloride, table salt. And that's one of the reasons they say if you're, you know, if you're on a low sodium diet, don't do some of these things because apparently, you know, the salt stays with the concoction that makes the baking soda. Other way is it's mined from an ore called Crona, C R O N A. So, and apparently that is the most common way. Crona. Let's see what that. Crona is a common source of soda ash, which is a significant economic commodity because of its application in manufacturing glass, chemicals, paper, and detergents. Hmm. What is a common name for Trona? Trona is a common name for sodium carbonate. Huh. All right. So they mine it. And they get it. And they crush it. Hmm, very interesting. Seems like passing carbonate, carbon dioxide and ammonia through a concentrated solution of sodium chloride. I guess that's mixed with water. To make it, you know, a solution. Because it says a solution of cl sodium chloride or table salt. Alright. Well there you have it. Learn something about baking soda. It is mostly used. From what I can tell. Oh, we didn't look at a dude's website. Anyway if you get interested in some of these other things. Go to jerrybaker.com He's got a website. He's got other things on his website besides you know, baking soda booklets. All right. Well, I appreciate everybody. Robert, Clell, thanks again for showing up, hanging out, making some comments. So, if you've made it through this all the way to the end, you're probably liking subscribe. You probably can't get enough. You're going to bin watch all the videos anyway. So, Tell a friend, tell a spouse, tell a horse. I don't care. Tell somebody. Tell something. Tell your car about it. I don't know. Maybe cars will be smart enough for one day to watch YouTube. And that'd be cool. They can like, subscribe to it. All right. Any questions?
Anybody? Come on. There's no such thing as stupid questions. All right. If there's no more questions, we'll call it a night. So, good luck, Robert. I'll think about you tomorrow in training. When I'm sitting there going, man, I wish I was at home. So, well, thanks. See you, everybody. Bye. Thank mm -hmm.